Hallelujah. You know, you never, I'm, I'm over here somewhere. See my, yeah, there I am. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of different today, isn't it, on the 11th hour? And um, we, are, we are absolutely, we had a good time, having a good time here on the 11th hour. Things get real serious, and they are real serious, and the Lord will lighten the mood. Isn't that something, how he'll do that so that we can, we can hear what he's saying? Amen. Now, Father, I ask you to give us eyes to see and ears to hear, that we can learn your word together as a family. And I give you praise and honor and glory for it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to, uh, I want us to, to just, I'm just going to say a few things here about this. And um, because where we are now, we are in the time of the eagle. And, and you understand, prophetic-minded people understand what I mean by that. We're in the time of the eagle. And, um, but soon the eagle will land. And when the eagle lands, the time of the lion will begin. Now, you know, you have four phases or four faces that go around the throne of God. Uh, the eagle, the lion, the, the ox, and the man. And you, and you have these going around the throne of God constantly. And these are all uh, phases of men. It's their lives. It's the phases of that, that will carry us all the way through. And we're in the time of the eagle right now, the flying eagle. Now, and the eagle has sought to be grounded. And men have built a cage for it so that it can never land where it needs to land. But the eagle will soon be freed. And it will land, but when it lands, the time of the lion begins. Now, I want to go ahead and start talking about that time because it's just right on the horizon, this lion, the time of the lion. And already you can almost see him coming with, with his mane in the wind, and, and he is running, and he's picking up speed. And, and know this for a fact, that he will arrive on the scene at exactly the precise moment he is supposed to, and he'll bring that time into this realm. Now, what is the time of the lion? What would it entail? What would it look like? A lot of different things, but it is on the other side of the Red Sea. In other words, when the Red Sea closes, the time of the lion will start. And when that starts, we must begin to move toward our promises. We have to move toward our promises. See, Hell is absolutely, totally afraid. We startled hell with praise like that. When, we were, when, we, when you start doing spontaneous praise, it's like the forces of hell don't know which direction you're going to jump next. They don't know where, they can't follow that. It's not scripted. It's not written down to where they can, they can highlight where they need to be and, and to intercept anything. They just, they just panic. And so in the time of the lion will pertain or, 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 or contain a lot of that. And so I want you to see this. Let me talk about a few things in the time of the lion. Let's look at Daniel and Daniel 6. Because in the prophetic scheme of things, we are in Daniel 7. But I want to show you something in Daniel 6 at the time of the lion. And this is when... You know, the, the evil, wicked people had, had devised a plot against Daniel to catch him because they said his integrity is too high. We can't catch him in anything immoral. We can't catch him in anything he's, uh, he's doing wrong with money, plots, anything. So if we're going to get Daniel, we're going to have to get him in something pertaining to his God. And Daniel prayed three times a day facing Jerusalem. And so if they were going to catch him, they were going to catch him there. And so, you know, they, they set up a, a law. They conned the king into passing this law using the king's vanity and conning him into saying, uh, only, you're the only God anyone can worship for 30 days. And so they set this law up knowing that Daniel was not going to quit praying. 
And so he prayed, and they were waiting there. Just They knew exactly the time, and they were just waiting there. And so they caught him, and Daniel, of course, he's not going to bow. He won't, he won't stop praying. And the king realized that he was a foolish king. Now, so the punishment for this was to be thrown into the lion's den. And so, you know, the lion's den was... Uh, Execution, um, it was their form of execution in those days of government. The government used the lion's den, among other things. Imagine that. And so then when the king had realized what he had done, in verse 18, then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. He was up all night. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God. He recognized what God was alive. Is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Listen to this now. I want you to see this. Is he able to deliver you from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me. Forasmuch as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. So we know in the time of the lions, it's going to be the time of plotting and scheming because they know they've lost, and they know that God's people are in authority. And so they're going to start plotting and scheming against the church, trying to set up things that will catch the church. And so remember this. Now, in that time, angels will be released to help us. There'll be angels come on the scene. But notice in the time of the lions, now you got to see this. Daniel spent the night with the hungry lions, but the angel came and shut their mouths. The king was exceeding glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. And the king commanded that they brought those men which had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children, their wives, and the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces or ever they came to the bottom of the den. So in the time of the lions, the lions, there's going to be two encounters. When the time of the lion comes, then God's people will be blessed around the lion. We will be blessed in the presence of the lion. Angels are in the presence of the lion. But the wicked men, that plotted to overthrow the nation, the world, God's people, everything they've plotted to do, it will be their time to be thrown into the lion's den. And when they're thrown into the lion's den, them, their children, their operatives, everyone else, the lion, the time of the lion will have the mastery over them. And break all their bones lest they, before they even hit the bottom. In the time of the lion, all peoples will come into that time, into that presence. But that's a time. Now watch. Already the court of Jehovah has been called. Already it was called. The Lord had me call the court of Jehovah in New Jersey. Then it was called here, and it was called. And the time of the lion.
the execution. What am I trying to say? A capital punishment of that time was the lion's den. That was capital punishment. And in the time of the lion, everything that's been tried right here in the courts, everything that's been going on being tried in the courts, behold, the time of the lion comes and God's people will lay down and sleep with the lion. They'll lay down and make their head on the shaggy pillow of a lion's mane and we'll just enjoy the night and we'll pass the night with the lion and we will understand the lion loves us and angels are in his presence and angels are walking around in the den. But when it comes your time then you will have your time with him also and when that time comes all of your operatives all of your uh, all of your uh, people that have set and plotted and schemed BLM LGBTQAI 4968 letters whatever it may be and 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 all of what you call 92 or 91 genders all of this is going to come in and can you imagine if someone else if the if nature believed in 91 genders you'd see crazy eyed squirrels running around on the trees because they don't even know what they are anymore you'd see zebras walking around laying on their head standing up with their head, their feet up in the air they don't know what they are anymore all of this that you've set to destroy a generation of people all to bring about the agenda of the serpent and the agenda of corrupting the seed and making the hybrid to come to bring the beast on the earth. You will have your time with the lion and you will never get to enjoy that reign. He'll only reign seven years because he's a loser He'll never get to reign but seven years, and that's because we're out of the way. But you won't get to be there. You won't get to be there because you will have spent the night in the lion's den, and your time will come to an end, and you'll find out that you burn in hell with brimstone and fire while that fool reigns on the earth. And you won't get to see it. And you'll know there is no reprieve. You were thrown into the lion's den. This is coming. This is coming. I don't understand how politicians get old and decrepit. I don't understand how they get old and decrepit and think they're going to enjoy another 10 years. I don't get that. Where do you think you're going? What do you think's going to do? Well, I will succeed in our agenda. Well, you won't know about it. You'll be in hell. You won't have a clue about what's going on if you, can, if you continue to push your agenda, trying to destroy the innocent, trying to destroy God's people, trying to raise up an abomination so that the Antichrist can, on, can come on the earth. And you don't even live that long to see it happen. Where do you think's going to happen to you? Hey, we'll get our agenda done. Well, you won't know it. You'll already be worm fodder by that time. You'll never make it. You're not going to enjoy it. The Lord says to me today to tell you, you will not make it there. Best repent. You best repent because you're already in, in your 80s. You best repent. Hallelujah. So the time of the lion is coming. The time of the lion, which is the spirit world's capital punishment. That is capital punishment in the spirit world. And all of your operatives and all of your people and all of the, of the, the pundits and all the people that are up there pushing the agenda, and I've got something else to say to you too, you crooked lawyers. The Lord brought this up in my spirit. Crooked lawyers, that you just rejoice in a courtroom knowing that person is innocent and knowing your client's wrong. You know they're wrong. You're, you, know you know exactly they're wrong, and yet you find every little loophole 
to get them off. Well, I'm going to tell you something. The Lord requires at your hand every piece of blood they end up shedding because you got them off. Everything they've done wrong is laid to your account. Everything they, they will do wrong from that point on is yours to deal with in the face of God. You remember that. For the Lord has me talking about this court. And he's continuing the court. And behold, the time of the lion approaches. It's coming. Best repent. Best do it now. For when he roars, there'll be no time left. Your time will come. I heard the Lord say something. All of you that know the Antichrist is coming and you're trying to bring him in the earth, none of you will get to see him. None of you. None of you will get to, to enjoy that rain. You'll be dead. None of you will get to enjoy that. And the people coming up behind you that didn't know everything you know will be in a place to be deceived. And they will spend that time. Uh, wow, man, that was something. Wow, wow. I guess that's enough today, huh? I, I, that's one of them things you said it and you say, what? Did I just say that? Well, don't you see he's lying to you? The devil's lying to you. If you continue down that road, you will never, you're not going to get to do that. Hallelujah. Well, it's been a heavy 11th hour today, hasn't it? It's been a good 11th hour. It's been a heavy 11th hour. There's been new sounds, new songs, new, new things, new words. And we've discussed the lion, the time of the lion. I'm looking around the fortress here, and, and when I said some of the things, I, it looks like people are going, well, you, you've pushed it too far this time. How far is too far? Only when the Lord says stop. And remember this, the anger of the Lord is always for one thing, his driving passion to deliver somebody. That's what the anger of the Lord is, the driving passion. You know, so you said that they'll be dead. Well, do you think they're going to live forever? I mean, when you're 80 years old and you're pushing mid-80s, most of you are on borrowed time now. I mean, you, got, you better be thinking about what's coming. Satan ain't going to rule. He ain't going to rule nothing. He can't even rule his own self. He's not going to rule. He has to have a man to do anything. Hallelujah. Well, Christy, you want to come tell us how to prosper today? Yes. One way is, is don't follow the devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't do demons. That's exactly right. We don't do demons. Hallelujah. Yes, and the main, the main way to prosper, number one, is by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And so I want to give you the opportunity to do that today. You know, the Apostle Paul made it so, he just put it, so simply because the Lord told him how to do it simply because he was the one that prayed the shortest sinner's prayer that we have record of when he was Saul and he said you know and and that that voice that light number one that blinded him that gave him a temporary blindness and then he heard Saul why do you persecute me and he said is that you Lord and that was it. And he, he, he changed from Saul to Paul and became one of the main reasons why you and I are here today. And he taught us so much of what we teach today. 
and one of the most brilliant men of all time. And we'll get to talk to him one day about it, but you will definitely get to see him one day if you make Jesus the Lord of your life because he's in the presence of the Lord because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so that's where he's at. And so I'd like to, I'd like to talk to him and hear more of his revelation that we didn't get to hear. And the way you do that, the way you get to experience those wonderful things of heaven that you hear people talk about is one way and one way only, and that is through Jesus and his blood. But the Apostle Paul wrote it just like this. He said, if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you confess with your mouth that he is Lord, then you will be saved. That's it. That's all you have to do. So today I want you to say, Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And just to add something to it, say, take my life and do something with it. Amen. And that's it. That's it. If you believed that, if, if you truly said that out of your heart, then you are born again. And you are a child of God, and you are on the road to prosperity if you did that. And so then, you know, the Lord shows you mysteries now. He'll reveal mysteries to you in the Scripture. And He starts to t talk to you about prosperity, how to navigate through, through this life. You know, those that don't have money and those that don't have prosperity here on earth, on this earth, you see the way they live, and you see the, where they're at, and it moves you. It, why do when we pull up to the side of the road, and we experienced this in, in Louisiana just last week, why when we pull to a stoplight and we see people who are begging for money? on the side of the road. Why does that move us? And why does that stir us? Because it ain't supposed to be that way. It's not supposed to be that way or it wouldn't move you to compassion to give to them. If, it, if that was natural and that is what was supposed to happen, then why does it, you know, in the South they'd say, break your heart. Why does it do that? We're, our heart ain't breaking. It's fixed, trusting in the Lord. But why does, it, why does it move you and grieve you? Because a human being should not be begging for money on the side of the road. You know, a, a dear, a, a friend of my parents, they've known him for, for a long time. I've, I've known him for as, as long as I've, I guess I've been alive. Uh, he spoke to us the other night at dinner, and he said he told us about his encounter in heaven. And Jesus told him, said, my body should be so prosperous, said, my body should be millionaires and billionaires by now with the teaching that they have in this earth. And you want to know where it starts? Right here. Everybody else's revelation just came from this book right here. He, he just revealed a different part to different people. But this is where it starts. And he said, you've got enough teaching right here. Enough revelation. If nobody ever spoke the, taught the word, uh, um, if nobody ever wrote another book, ever, you got more than enough right here. This is all you need to survive. And he said, my body should be millionaires and billionaires by now because of the teaching that they have. And he said, the words that shook me to my core, he said, you insult my blood when you don't prosper. And, you know, the Lord told me that a couple years ago. He just told it to me in a different way. He said, you know, what was that strike for? What was that? You know, thank God that Jesus is not, he does not think the way we do. And he doesn't act the way we would because if it was us, we'd say, man, I didn't have to take that one. I could have took one less because... Well, I mean, it was for this reason, but you're not doing it, so why did I do that? But he, did, he doesn't regret it, and he doesn't want to take it back. Why? Because that prosperity where he defeated poverty that day 
And he took that strike for you and I. There's a translation that says in the scripture, with one stroke, he became poor so that you could be rich. And it's still available for us now. That's why he don't regret it. That's why he doesn't want to take it back because it's still available now for you and I to operate in and to walk in and navigate through this life and subdue this earth until he comes. We're able to do that. It's still available. It never went away. And so he tells us in his word that he wishes above all things that we prosper and that we be in health even as our soul prospers. It's time your soul needs to start prospering. Get in the word, prosper the soul, and guess where everything else will come up to meet. But that is where you start. And don't let anybody tell you anything other. You start right here. In the Word of God. Why? Because Jesus was the Word made flesh. And let me tell you something. Do not say, you know, I had somebody ask me one time, well, tithing is only New Testament, right? Or Old Testament and not New Testament, right? I said, I always get corrected every time I say that because it just comes out the wrong way. But I said, I looked at him and I said, you can't throw out the Old Testament. I said, what does it matter? I said, what does it matter if tithing is more talked about back then? I said, because the scripture says that Jesus was the word made flesh. I said, and isn't that the Old Testament and the New Testament? I said, what are you going to do, split Jesus in half and only listen to half of what he says? I said, he's the whole word, Old Testament and New Testament. So if you ain't throwing Jesus out, don't throw that out either. And so it don't matter where it talks about in the Bible of where it is and where it at. This is Jesus right here. This is him. And everything this scripture says, I believe it, and it's still available for me today. Amen. So Luke 6, 38, that is in the New Testament. And it says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. You say, I believe it, I receive it, and I call it done in Jesus' name. Now, if you're a tither, Malachi 3.10, you know what? I'm, I'm living proof that tithing works. So don't tell me to throw it out because I'm not doing it. Why? Because it's been, it's been not only a, a safe haven for finances, but it's been a safe haven for my life. Because he says, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. I, I'll do it. And so I'm living proof that tithing works. Everybody in this room right now is proof that tithing works. Everybody connected to this ministry is proven that they stand there living proof that tithing works. And so I'm going to keep on keeping on. Amen. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And All nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome lamb, saith the Lord of hosts. Say, I believe it, I receive it, I call it done, in Jesus' name, amen, so be it. And if praise reports today, hallelujah. Well, I'm going to pass this on to Roxanne, and she can encourage us with some praise reports from our partners. Yes, hallelujah. We had a couple come in this past week. Um, And this one was actually sent, um, we just got it in the mail, but it was sent from an 11th hour program previously uh, for the end of last year. It says that um, she was healed during the 11th hour because at the end of the program, Prophet Robin said, someone's left foot just got healed. I received it and was healed from all pain in my foot that had been bothering me for over a month. So praise the Lord. 
She was completely healed of foot pain. If you ever had foot pain, that is that is wonderful not to have it anymore. <laughs> so we had this one, and, and stay with me. This is kind of a long one, but this was an amazing praise report. When I read this, I was about to shout the other day. She said, last year, they are partners of the 11th hour. She said, last year, within one month of each other, I received a check from my insurance company for 500 or more dollars when I inquired. They said that I had overpaid. I said, I promise you I didn't overpay. And that same month, I got my power bill, and it said I had a $547 credit. I called and explained that this must be a mistake, and after checking, they told me that it was correct. So I accepted it, but the next month, I received the bill again, and it was almost a $900 credit. I called again, and again, they researched it and said, no, ma'am, it's correct. For the next several months, I did not have a power bill. Now, this week, after um, checking my online banking, I realized that because my debit card was compromised about a year ago, that I had not been paying my trash or recycle bill. So I called and told them that I, I probably owed them a lot of money, and I assumed it was around three or $400. When I called, she said, yes, your card won't work anymore. So I gave her a new card, and I asked to pay the bill over the phone. She said, well, this is odd. It looks like you have almost a $300 credit. She said, uh, I, I said, I don't think so. And she said she would call the owner and call me back. So she called me back to say it definitely was a credit and I wouldn't have to pay for at least a year. So also, my husband received the baptism of the Holy Ghost on November 24th, 2021, while Prophet Robin instructed us at the end of the 11th hour. She said, I've prayed for him for 38 years. He was the best, or in my case, the worst heathen ever. She said, now he prays in tongues with his hand raised in his bedroom all the time. She said, God is absolutely good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Send your praise reports in through chat, through our email, so that we can read these and rejoice with you. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Man, that's awesome. Isn't that awesome? And you know, right now, Krista has led you in the prayer to receive Jesus. Don't, don't stop there. Go on to the upper room and get baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. How do you do that? Just simply say, Lord Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Ghost and fire with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. See, the Holy Ghost lives in you, but now he wants to come up on you and anoint you for service, to anoint you to move deeper into the world of the Spirit. You notice Jesus never really did, he never did one miracle at all until he was baptized in the Holy Ghost, until the Spirit of God came down on him like a dove. And then he began. And he went into the wilderness after that and did battle with Satan and defeated him. So you need the Holy Ghost. You need the Spirit of God baptism upon you. And you begin to pray mysteries that are hidden in God. So after you say that, Lord Jesus, baptize me in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit tells me what to say. Then just start praising Him out loud. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And now whatever sounds you hear, just begin to release them out of your mouth. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Risho Kurapa. Come on, just let it roll. Somebody's doing it right now. This is the first day of power in your life. From this day forward, you'll walk in things you never did. To show you that other tongues is not coming out of your head. Do you realize that you can read the word in your mind while you pray in the Holy Ghost out loud? You can't do that in any other language in the world. You can't speak Spanish out of your mouth while you read in English in your mind something else entirely. You can't because it's all coming out of your soul. But when you pray in the Spirit, it comes up out of your spirit and it bypasses your thinking. And so your mind is still free to read. You can just read this, you know, in Genesis, in the beginning. You know, you can just kind of, you can read along through there. If you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now I'll read it in my mind and pray in the Spirit. 
Ele brota o curixê, ramando o curixê levarate que esse posto que ele ande. Agon, the next verse. Ele prando o curixê prete, caxi le prande. Ele brota o curixê a caxi le pumbarate que ele vede. The face of the waters. Isn't that something? And so it's coming out of your spirit, not out of your mind. So do that today and write in and tell us that you've done this. We would rejoice with you. Amen. Well, and you know, I want to tell you something else, too, that came to me while Krista was teaching the word on prosperity. You know, people say, well, the Lord wants to, you know, he, he lets some people have to beg or something in order to keep them humble. You know, the Bible doesn't talk about anything about God keeping you humble. It says you are to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That means to say what he says about you, to act the way he says you are, and to call yourself after what he says you're called, after his name. That's humbling yourself because most of the time you don't even feel worthy in your feelings to do such a thing. But when you do it anyway, you're humbling yourself under his mighty hand. And the word is self-governed. Remember that. It's self-governed. And what I mean by that is if you're not living holy and right, you're not going to prosper. You can forget it. The only reason wicked people will have any prosperity is because without thinking about it, they're giving. They're just giving or they're putting uh, uh, principles of God into place. I remember a nightclub owner years ago, I was playing, a, I was ahead of, a, of our band that we were playing with then and he come up at the end of the Saturday night and said, I've got to get out of here. You know, and in the South, as we're saying, he was, you know, he was, he was flying pretty high, you know. He wasn't drunk as a boiled owl, but he was close, you know. And he, 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 he came up and he said, I got to get out of here. And this is the way he talked. Hey, hey, hey. And I said, what, where are you going? He said, well, I got to get in church in the morning. And give my tithe. <laughs> he, his, uh, well, I say he owned it. His daughter and her husband owned it. But he was running everything as far as the entertainment. He had to say so. And he said, I looked at him and called him by name. I said, you, you go to church? He said, hey, hey, say what you want. But it works. And that man was prospering, living like the devil tithing in church but the tithe was producing because it was a principle of the word and that's how a lot of wicked people prosper you may not know it and you find out later you say man how did they prosper well you find out that they supported this orphanage they gave to this they did that they did the other and the word says give and it's given to you and so it's self-governed hallelujah hallelujah I wish I could say more about that right now, but it is self-governed. That's like if you do something wrong, it, the Scripture says there's a seed planted and there's a harvest that will come for that. So it is self-governed. You don't have to try to keep people humble. The Word, is, it's, it takes care of itself. Amen. Because believe it or not, the whole world every or the whole earth and everything in it answers to this hallelujah well it's been good to be with you today and um, I hope you've received a lot out of it or I'm going to say I trust you do hope means I'm I'm expecting that you did hallelujah earnest expectation until next time we gather together right here around God's word I want all of you to know in Finland I want all of you to know in New Zealand that keeps always coming up in my heart. I think the Lord is doing a big revival there. I want all of you to know in Madrid. I want all of you to know in Hawaii. I want all of you to know all around the world, the Ukraine, Russia, Singapore. I want you to know that we love you. Jesus loves you. And no matter if I call the name of your nation or not, we absolutely do love you. I pray for our partners every day. I'll be praying today or tonight at some point over them. Hallelujah. 
And never forget, God is absolutely good. Shalom, shalom.